Evansville's last appearance in 1989. They made the second round. UTEP was here in 1990 last, and they were knocked out in the first round. But they were the 1966 NCAA champions, and they've been in this tournament eight of the last nine years. UTEP and Orange defending to our right. Marlon Maxey, number 25. Johnny Melvin, number 32, are the forwards. We're looking now at Prince Stewart, the 5'11 guard from Lexington. Melvin starts, stops off the back iron. Hoopman got a piece of the rebound, and then it's taken away by Reed Jackson. Opening seconds here. Elkins into the paint, now kicks it outside. Jackson on Melvin, and Jackson goes to the glass. He's fouled. Pretty good offensive move to the basket. When you take a look at Jackson going one-on-one, -on -one, knew how to ball fake once he jumped stop, and that's what drew the foul. Very smart play. Watch for Evansville now when they play their offense. They're not going to gamble. They're going to play solid team defense, make sure that they put people in positions to score. Very interesting here. No one on the line for foul shooting. Why? They're trying to take away the quick transition by UTEP. Reed Jackson makes the first point of the game. And there's the rest of his team for them. That, that, that really will slow down a fast break right there because now <laughs> you're not going to have anything going down the floor. And that just takes Prince and Rivera out of the game for the transition against the score. Rivera brings it up for Maxi now to Melvin. Eddie Rivera, the 5'8 junior from New York, inside for Maxi. Rebounded by Van Dyke. Maxi very strong inside, but Van Dyke got good position to get the offensive rebound. Big two points for UTEP. UTEP with four starters and double figures. And the leader, David Van Dyke, averages 14 on a game. Kokenauer, he's got a bit of a bad back. They told us before the game, did the folks from Evansville, that he's feeling fine. Case Bear is rejected. Good block. Melvin in the corner for Utah. Rivera directing traffic. And Rivera off the glass. That's going to bother them. When they set the pick, Rivera goes around off that pick on that screen. And what happens, Evansville is not quick enough with Jackson coming off it. And this could be a problem before the day's over. Jackson for Hoopman and jumping high was Stewart to knock the ball out of his hands. Now. UTEP's doing a good job of keeping Case Bear away from the ball. They're going to try to deny him as much as possible, force him, play him tight. Jackson inside. Hoopman turns. Defensive goaltending. Defensive goaltending is the call. And so Hoopman's attempt counts. 4-3, UTEP. Now, if the screen for Rivera becomes a problem, watch for Evansville to start to switch on that screen. This is Melvin. Texas El Paso Miners. Evansville, Purple Aces. Final game of this first round in Dayton. And once again, the little man, and he hits. See, Rivera read it. Knew to come back when he saw the defensive player drop behind the screen and shot the jumper top of the circle. Very smart guard, Rivera. Open hour for Jackson. Jackson trying the paint. Elkins from the corner. In and out. And the ball gathered in by Eddie Rivera. Nice pass. Oh, yeah. Inside, and it is jammed by David Van Dyke. No, that was Maxi inside. Maxie, Pardon me, Maxi. Maxi's very strong, very physical. They'll go to him a lot inside. Van Dyke will look to go to get the rebound if he misses it. Maxi at 6'8, Van Dyke at 6'9. Okay, Case Bear has not gotten into the game yet. He hasn't done a good job screening. Now watch this pass. Good ball motion right here. Reversal back to the top and watch him look inside. Great pass, bounce pass. 
and the power move by Maxi to the rim. Pretty good execution. Eight to three, five point margin for the Miners. Heisel in off the bench for the Evansville Purple Aces. Mark Heisel, a sophomore guard from Terre Haute, Indiana. What Jimmy Cruz is doing right now is talking to Case Bear that he's got to move away from the ball to get open and use the screens to get open. He's been standing around too much and has not gotten into the offense yet. Open hour for Elkins. Heisel Five go. seconds on the shot clock. Heisel lets it fly off the back iron. Rebound to UTEP. Melvin. Vince Stewart brings it up. Inside for Maxi and a foul. The concern I have right there, knowing that Heisel was going to shoot that ball, Evansville just ran away from the offensive rebound. On a long shot, Jackson could have had that rebound. I think this is one thing they've got to understand. If you're going to shoot the ball long here in Dayton, these rims are hard and that ball will come off long, and they can get some easy points before they release. They're worrying about the quick transition. I just think they should take another look, get the rebound if it's there as far as an offensive second chance to score. Lee Jackson picked up the foul as first. Maxie at the line for the Miners. And makes the first of two. Case Beer comes back in after a conference on the sideline with Jim Cruz. Elkins goes out. Now, this is a pretty good lineup right here because they've got good quickness in the backcourt. They know what they can do as far as looking for Case Beer. It'll be interesting to see if he starts coming off screens to get open for his shot. Minor lead, 15.38 to go first half. Tim Ryan and Digger Phelps in Dayton. This is Heisel, and Heisel hits for three. Very good set play by Jimmy Cruz. They did that in a timeout. They set a double screen on the weak side. Case Beer gets the assist for setting up Heisel for three. Only the fifth shot from the field for Evansville. Now two of five. UTEP is four of six. This is Edwards, Prince Edwards, and Eddie Rivera, the backcourt tandem. And the big guy, Maxi. Don't go for him, and Case Beer does the rebounding for the Purple Aces of Evansville. What they're doing now is letting Case Beer handle the ball more, set Heisel up for screens, or now Case Beer come off the screen. Here it is on the weak side underneath. Take a look at the floor balance. Open hour, and Heisel the backcourt. Inside for Jackson. Jackson. Good off ball. The glass. It's good. Nice play. See, Mackey. When you take a look at that power play, Maxie was going inside looking to block, and the ball fake made that a good offensive move. They're back in it now. Evansville crowd gets into it wearing their purple shirts here in Dayton. Melvin to Rivera. Rivera in the paint. Little guy sees it in and out. Hoopman rebounding. Sasha Hoopman came over to high school in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Northview High School from Germany. Through a connection of uh, Uvi Blob, the former Indiana player, that Blob's brother, we're making the arrangements for him. And Evansville tracked him down, got him to come and play his college ball there, and he's been a fine, averaging 12 1 a game. Missing that time. Edwards back the other way, and he lays it up and in. That's a problem in transition. When you get back, you got to have vision. So in case he beats the guy guarding him, somebody else has got to pick him up. Kokenauer and Heisel in the backcourt. Jackson, Case Beer, the forwards with Hoopman. Kokenauer fires a long pass over for Heisel. Fifteen seconds on the shot clock. Hoopman inside. Hoopman turns. Missed everything. Last two times down, they look to go inside. Nothing's happened. I think they got to get him out, pull him up high, let Case Beer go inside. Edwards for Melvin and Van Dyke from the free throw line missed. Case Beer rebound. Well, he's controlling the defensive board, so he's into the game. He's just not getting open offensively. Case Beer, a 25.9 average in the regular season, and from the corner, it is Kokenauer. Well, Kokenauer got open in the corner. No one picked them up, and they're not afraid to shoot the threes when they have them in Evansville. One point margin for the Miners of Texas El Paso. Edwards lets it fly. Hoopman rebounds, and he's fouled. Johnny Melvin. Melvin picks up his second. 
good balance on the defensive boards. I think Evansville is controlling the game momentum as far as not allowing El Paso to get the second, third chance. What they need to do now is to keep the balance they have in their offense. UTEP so concerned about Case Bear, the other players have picked up the slack, and that's a good balance that Evansville has in this, this game right now. Jim Bice comes in. They have three guards in the offense now for the Miners of UTEP, and Maxie gets a rest. Bice is number 10. Spells his name G Y M. <laughs> That's the, how that happened. It used to be Jim J I M. <laughs> he said a sports writer when he was a freshman in high school was kidding him. So they tried it as a joke, and it stayed with him ever since. I guess he's a true gym rat. Elkins. Hogenauer. Elkins for three. Yes. First lead for Evansville, 14 to 12. Well, you can talk about the, the consistency of the defense of Evansville on the boards, but the offense, they're very unselfish. Case Bear has given up points to allow other people into the game. And, and UTEP right now has got a D up as far as putting more pressure on the three-point line. Vice goes only six feet, so they've got 5'11 Stewart, 5'8 Rivera, and six foot Vice in there at the moment for Don Haskins. Shot from the corner by Van Dyke off the mark and a foul off the ball. Well, and Case Bear made the baseline move. You know, I don't know if Van Dyke's going to shoot that shot where he's going to be consistent, so I would not foul him in that situation. Here's Case Bear trying to get open inside. They're hitting him. That's good way to play it. He's going to be banged up, and he knows it. But El Paso's doing that. They're trying to keep him away from getting open. Stewart's doing a good job of guarding him. But I think before the night's over, he'll work his way open. Reed Jackson back in. Case Beer again uh, having a huddle with Jim Cruz, who you can see just took him out so he can do a little chatting with him. He's well, done I this twice. Thing, what it, Jimmy's trying to do is don't get your head down. Understand, we've got a balanced attack. Everybody's into this game offensively. We're doing a good job on the boards. You'll get back in there now and make things happen. And he is right up and ready to come back. Pokenauer. And highs on the backboard. Lee Jackson off to Elkins. Hoopman. And he traveled inside the paint, just trying to get control of the ball. Don Haskins, 31 years as head coach here at UTEP. During that timeout, he's looking to say, well, fellas, look, we took Case Beer out of the game, but we forgot the other players. Now maybe we better change our defensive strategy, tighten up on the outside shooting, and if that happens, then maybe Case Beer gets open for Evansville. Haskins to send in Roy Howard, a junior forward from Houston, number 33. Driving the lane, Rivera. See, Kokonar cannot guard him. He's got to slough Rivera. off. When he picks his dribble up, then close him out. Otherwise, he's going to do that all night. Drive to the basket. Tied at 14. Heisel inside for Case Bear. Now, what he did a good job of, coming to the medium post, he's got the size on Stewart. And when you see that size, all he has to do is turn and jump over him. That's how he got that shot off. First basket for Case Bear. Rivera missing this time. Elkins and Van Dyke battle for it. Van Dyke picks up right, the let's foul. Let's watch right now Rivera taking this one-on-one -on -one move. Changes the direction. They can't pick up. They don't come over and help. One of those players, either Hoopman in the back's got to come over and help out. You just can't let him go down the lane. He's too quick doing that. Evansville by two. Elkins, Heisel, Hoopman. Jackson and Case Beer for the Purple Aces. This is Reed Jackson. Jackson back from Elkins. And he's called for traveling. I think they're a little impatient looking inside. If they just wait before they dribble, Evansville on the wings. When Case Beer sets the green, he's coming back on that screen. He's open inside. UTEP now has Edwards and Vice in the backcourt. Yeah. 
Melvin Ralph Davis a sophomore from Chicago in the game at forward number 23 and Van Dyke and that miss gathered in by Hoopman. Case Pierre dribbled into traffic and he's fouled by Bice. Good penetration by Case Pierre coming down the floor. He read the defense, knew he could make his world move into the middle. Bice made contact on him. Now we're going to shoot or they're going to take it out of bounds. No shot. Foul on the Miners. Elkins driving on Melvin now kicks it back. Nice little watch by Bice. This is Elkins in and out. Rebound Case Beer back to the glass. Good tip. Tipped in by Hoopman. Good tip. Four point lead for Evansville. We've got a good rhythm going right now, Evans, but I think this group just plays a little bit. We can build on this lead. Van Dyke down the lane. No opposition. Well, Case Beer gambled on the pass. And you don't have to. He's not going to beat you outside, so just keep him in front of you, especially you don't gamble to get in a second foul. 18-16. Purple Aces leading the Miners. Bob in for Hoopman, and Hoopman with a stop. Well, Van Dyke came out too high on him. Through the lob, he knows what to do with the ball once he catches it. Six points for Hoopman. He averages 12-1 a game, and Melvin ran right through Hoopman, and he'll get the offensive foul. Well, what they're doing well now defensively, they're looking at the cuts and the motion. And credit Jimmy Cruz for that. His team always plays solid defense. Of course, he learned from the master and Bob Knight at Indiana. Now watch Hoopman right now. He sees the ball, sees the cut from the weak side, steps in and takes the charge away from the ball. Good defensive play by Hoopman. There's foul on Roy Howard, number 33. Kokenauer back in the game. Hoopman gets a rest. Small lineup in now for the Purple Aces. Case Bear inside. Three miners come to him. What Jimmy Cruz did in that last time out, they're putting four players on the perimeter at the three-point line and allowing Case Bear to post up on Prince Stewart because of the size difference. You got 5'11 inside. He can't guard Case Bear. And when you look at Case Bear at 6'3, he's got the points going for himself in there. You know, it's interesting when you look at the great players in the state, Damon Bailey at Indiana, Eric Montrose at North Carolina. Southmores, look at what they've done this year. This kid may be the best player in the state. 21 to 16 lead for Evansville. Edwards. Lobs it inside for Van Dyke. Won't drop for him. Jackson gets into the fray, and Maxi follows up. Maxi can get to the boards. You can't leave him. Uh, Van Dyke can miss that shot. He's done it before. He doesn't have that finesse where he goes up strong. You got to keep Maxi off the boards. Maxi got, got a great offensive rebound for UTEP right here. Maxi coming off arthroscopic knee surgery during this season. 6 8 senior from Chicago. And a turnover by the Purple Aces. Edwards driving and they get it right back. Kokenauer. Bice going with him and Kokenauer missed the layup, but he's fouled by Bice. Well, I think Rivera's got to get back in the game. I, I think he just does a better job of running the team. Uh, it, it looks to me like when you look at Stewart, uh, he should be the second guard. Maybe Bice come out and get that rhythm going again that Rivera did in the beginning of the game. Well, Rivera about to come in as you speak. And it's going to be Stewart getting the rest. Now they'll rotate these three guards all night because Bice can shoot the three. So if he gets hot, uh, they've got the balance they're looking for. But I just like Rivera with the ball for, for UTEP. Kokenauer makes the first of two. Again, Evansville with their four remaining players standing back near their own paint. You got a lot of confidence in their foul shooting. And when you take a look at the transition game of, of UTEP, you don't want to give them the easy points coming down. So this forces them now to pick up a half court. Kokenauer missed the second, got one for 22-18 lead. 7.23 to go. First half. Vice in the corner, nowhere to go. You want to go inside to Maxi because I think he's the guy that gives them going that offense. Ralph Davis cops it up. Elkins comes up with the turnover. 
Casebeer brings it up the floor. Now Kokenar will set up the play for Evansville. There you Casebeer go. in the corner for three. Yes. No. He likes to shoot that from there. They look to throw that skip pass. He'll get hot on that shot. Rivera inside for Van for Maxi, and he's fouled. Maxi only has one thing in mind <laughs> to get to the basket once he has the ball in there. Well, Maxi's so strong inside, and, and when you take a look at the size of, of the front line uh, for Evansville, they really don't have a forward that can guard him. So they'll look to go to him more. Maxi inside, I think he's the guy to go to. But when you find that triangle, as when he's on the low post, the wingman has to reverse it back to the top of the circle, then look inside to get him the ball. Kokenauer picked up the foul. Hoopman comes back in for Evansville. Vice goes to the bench for UTEP, so Rivera and Stewart are now the guard pair again for the Miners. Maxi at the line. Marlon Maxi, a 71% shooter from the free throw line, has seven points in the game. You know, Case Bear, the last four games, has shot 17 for 24, shooting threes. So he can turn it on, even though he missed the first three. Elkins rebounding on the miss. 22 to 19, Evansville leads by three. Okanar for Casebeer pulls up. That won't drop, and Maxi rebounds. Rivera, good pass inside for Van Dyke, who has nice it off the read. glass. See, Rivera does a good job of reading his personnel. He knows him a lot better than Stewart. I let Rivera do this all night because he can just get their offensive rhythm back. Reed Jackson to Kokenauer. Casebeer. Casebeer over Stewart, but couldn't hit it. Oh, he's rushing. Van Dyke again using that backboard well. Well, they're not getting back in transition. Hoopman's just turning, looking at his head going the other way. He's got to get down the floor and pick up Van Dyke a lot quicker. Van Dyke doing a good job of hitting the last two shots going down the floor. Eight points for Van Dyke. Lee Jackson off for Elkins. Trying to get it into Hoopman. Van Dyke got a piece of it. Hoopman, good recovery. Hoopman couldn't hold that one, and it's stolen away by Prince Edwards. Edwards, good feed for Maxi. Oklahoma and DePaul, the most significant teams out. Massachusetts, their first ever win. And a lot of people, including Gary Phelps, think they may go some distance. Big Ten is 5-0 so far, and the SEC 4-0. If you're following uh, how the particular conferences are doing in the tournament. And the Big Eight, I think, uh, will be very much in that picture despite the loss of Oklahoma today. Well, Evansville right now is in the negative. UTEP's taken the last two minutes and 50 seconds for an 11-4 run, and they've gotten back into controlling this game. Elkins, Jackson, Kokenauer. Inside to Hoopman. Kokenauer lets it fly. Casebeard knocks the rebound out of bounds. It'll be UTEP ball. Well, I think Evansville's got to do more driving the ball, penetration of the ball. When you don't do that, I think that puts you in negative situations where you just rely on outside shooting too much because you're not going to get those offensive rebounds. Rivera and Edwards, the guard pair again for UTEP. With Van Dyke, Maxi, and Ralph Davis. The lineup now for the Miners of Texas El Paso. Rivera with the balls, the guys made this spurt work for them. Edwards hits for two, just inside the three-point line, 27-22, four points came for off him. the baseline screen and had the play to make it work. Kokenauer for Hoopman, and he is fouled by Maxi. When you take a look at Evansville, to me, when they make the penetration move to the basket, things happen. We saw it happen there where they got fouled. But I think when Heisel comes back in the game, He's the guy that can do things that make this general offense become more penetration where they're looking to go inside, then kick it out for your balanced three-point shot. Sasha Hoopman. When you take a look at Della Schrump, 
Christian Felt, Juve Blah. Germany has done a great job of, of developing the big man. Mark Heisel returns to the lineup for Evansville. They've got to make a spurt now. There's four minutes to go in this game for the half, and this is where Evansville's got to step up a notch to come back into this game. Jaka Chandler, their sixth man normally at the guard position, has got a bad knee injury and wearing a brace, tried to practice yesterday. We haven't seen him in the game today. That re means really they've only got six guys Evansville to play, and so far Cruz rotating them pretty well. Can they go the distance? Rivera missing, rebounded by Johnny Melvin. Melvin on the boards. This is Melvin. From the paint won't go for him. Kokenauer up. Four point minor lead. 340 to go first half. Kokenauer for Case Beer and it's blocked. Van Dyke. And a foul. As the ball came to Vice. As frustrated as Case Beer is, he knows he just has to stay with his game. Uh, he wants to go inside. Another ball fake, maybe get the three point play, but at least he's drawing the fouls. And as long as they draw the fouls, that keeps them in the game. Johnny Four Nolan point picks difference. It up. This cuts it to two if he makes these. Third foul on Melvin. Jimmy Cruz knows that he can't let this game get out of control. He'll play the smart game tempo as far as still playing aggressive defense, but knowing that he wants to work special offensive plays to set up Case Bear. No one at the line, they do this a lot for two reasons. One, they just have confidence in the foul shooting, but two, they don't want Rivera coming down quick, number 11 for UTEP, and getting that quick transition score. Ralph Davis in for Melvin. Case Bear made the first and the second. 27 25, two point lead, a timeout called. Boy, you get that game fatigue. If I've been calling him Prince Edwards, I got to apologize because it's Prince Stewart because he's a great guard, knows how to get open. And is a factor in this game with Rivera and Vice in the backcourt. Vice and Rivera at the moment in the backcourt. That shot from Davis off the mark. Back the other way. The Purple Aces, Jackson, Heisel, Kokenauer, Case Beer. Case Beer in traffic, back off to Heisel. Davis covering Case Beer tightly, and he feeds Heisel. Heisel missed everything. Well, Case Beer made the penetration to the baseline from the foul line pass back to Heisel. Just didn't have his range. He can hit those three, so he'll get his confidence back. Evansville 8 of 22 now shooting in this first half. UTEP 12 of 23. Vice to Rivera. Van Dyke. Nope. Gets his own rebound. Trying to get over Hoopman. Off the glass, misses again, and this time it's Case Beer rebounding. That's where Van Dyke doesn't finish the play. He doesn't go strong to the basket, and he gets some problem areas around that baseline, and Mackey could not get to the offensive rebound. Case Beer at 6'3", averages nine and a half rebounds a game. He's a force everywhere, but he hasn't been able to get on track scoring here. Heisel, nope, back iron, vice rebounding. Under the two minute mark we go first half and Dyke. Vice. Maxi. Maxi so strong inside. Case Bear doesn't want to get another foul. I wouldn't play him. I'd have to switch off on that because they're going to start doing that more and more. And I think if UTEP realizes that no one in Evansville can guard Max E in time, then they're just going to start going more to their inside game. Evansville has missed nine in a row. They need something here down by four. 127 left in the half. Open hour. Jackson. And drop for him. That's 10 in a row they've missed. Purple Ace is cold. Miners are hot. Rivera, his pass blocked. Good play by Jackson. Open hour. Case Beer. Case Beer driving the baseline and is fouled by Davis. 
Well, Davis is pretty quick, but he didn't move his feet to the baseline. If he cut off the baseline, then Case Bear would have come back to the middle where they would have had more help. First against Davis, 10th team foul. You know, even though they missed 10 in a row, they're still in this ball game. And, and I'll tell you, Evansville will play a lot better in the second half because when Jim Cruz gets them inside, he'll be able to analyze the things they're not doing. Don Haskins right now is on the referee about that foul, knowing that as he looks at it, why put him on the line? Let's let him play. Twenty-nine, twenty-six. Don Haskins, his team tied for first in the Western Athletic Conference this year. Finalist in the tournament, losing to BYU on a shot at the buzzer from 54 feet away. Kevin Nixon of BYU. And Case Bear goes out because he doesn't want him to get the three fouls. And when you look at Jim Cruz right now, that's a pretty good move when you only got a minute to go in this half. White Gamble losing your best offensive player who's not had a good offensive half but could turn it on in the second half. UTEP going for one shot. Miners lead by two. Davis outside. Ralph Davis, sophomore from Chicago. This is the guy they want with the ball. Rivera. Weiss with 16 seconds on the shot clock. Heisel knows it too. He's denying Rivera all over. And reset the clock, which means they will get the last shot. They've got 23 seconds to eat up. Evansville will take everything they can do to try to steal this pass. Weiss handling it, and Heisel sticking to Rivera like glue. And <laughs> Rivera going to the official saying, hey, can he be this close to me? Davis missing and Hoopman rebounding. Eight seconds left and Hoopman's pass off the mark. He had a guard right next to him. He looked too quick. He had plenty of time. Big men should look to get the ball to the guy that's going to make the play happen. Kokenauer was right next to him. Threw it long. Couldn't get it. Turnover now. UTEP has another chance to score. Six and a half seconds. Rivera. Good feed for Van Dyke. He's short off the glass and Hoopman has it at the buzzer. Evansville shooting 33 percent in the first half eight for 24 from the field but eight for 12 on the line they're still down two points so all they got to do is put their offense together they get back in this game maybe get the lead only two down here as we begin the second half and it'll be UTEP ball with a, the a foul call if I'm UTEP this half I would get Maxi open inside let Rivera run the show look to see what they can do then by getting Van Dyke on the boards that bothers Evansville defensively. Stewart picked up his third foul for the Miners in his opening seconds of the second half. Reed Jackson, Kokenauer, Heisel, Case Beer, and Hoopman starting for the Purple Aces. And Case, Case Beer, Beer really struggled. Didn't he that first half? Goes one for seven. I mean, he scores 31 and a half against Notre Dame, and, and tonight he gets one field goal. El Paso's doing a good job of making sure that he gets help when he comes off screen. So one or two guys will hit him, which really puts pressure on him getting open inside. So Case Bear's been struggling with that. Hoopman stole it from Maxey. And that gives Jackson the opportunity. Hoopman with a follow, he's got it. That's his job description. If he can just do that and stay out of Case Bear's way on the weak side, then go get the rebounds, then Case Bear's gonna have more freedom to get open underneath. Rivera and Stewart. The guard pair for UTEP to start the second half as they did the game. Ralph Davis at one of the forward spots with Maxi. And Van Dyke the center, number 52. Stewart, of course, can play one or two, and he's not afraid to penetrate. Stewart in and out. Well, what you're going to see Hubert do, you're going to see this drive here coming up. Right now, good penetration going inside, strong to the rim. Hoopman comes over, goes up and under to the weak side, to the strong side, makes a good offensive rebound score. Kokenauer and Heisel in the backcourt for the Purple Aces. 
Jackson trying to get it to Case Beer and well, Jackson's, miscue. Jackson's got to keep his dribble, and when he sees Case Beer going up the lane with a guy on the shoulder, dribble down and throw the bounce pass in from the baseline side. That's why that play isn't working. It's more of the execution of the guards getting the ball to Case Beer than this Case Beer getting open. Tied at 29. Off the hands of Hoopman. Van Dyke's Aaron pass. Miners keep the ball. Stewart outside to Van Dyke. Van Dyke driving. And Hoopman gathers in the rebound. Quickly to Heisel. There you go. Mark Heisel. Case Spear for three. That's him. That's his game. He can shoot the threes. 32 to 29. Evansville on a run now. Defensively, what do they have to do? Keep Maxi away from the game inside. Uh, as you saw the last time down, Van Dyke didn't finish the shot. So that means Rivera's got to take the game over again, which he did at the end of the second half. And Rivera lets it fly and hits. He can do that. He does not want to lose this game. Rivera can do it and ice the game himself. He'll take it over by himself. Evansville by one. Hokenauer driving baseline, turned back by Davis. Tough pass. Case beer, nowhere to go. Rick Stewart. Down the lane, he's got one. The little men for UTEP come alive. See, they can do more of that. I, I think if Rivera and Stewart do that from the top of the circle, no matter if it's full court transition or, or half court offense, Evansville isn't quick enough to recover to that defensively. Off the hood of, foot of uh, Rivera. See, here goes Stewart right now. Makes a good change over Dringle. Dribble going to the basket. Heisel can't get to him. Goes up and, and strong. Stewart makes a good play in that crossover dribble. Hokenauer off for Heisel. Heisel hits. See, penetration bothers both teams. When you go down the middle, somebody's going to collapse. When they collapse, hit the open man. Very good play by Case Beer. 34 33, Evansville. Surprise, Case Beer is going to play Maxi. Could go the other way. You need Case Beer in the game. I'm surprised Jackson doesn't play Maxi inside so that Case Beer doesn't get his third foul because he's going to need him. He can't afford to take him out, Jimmy Cruz. Maxi got the foul, and they sure can't afford to take him out. They've got nobody to put in. We have not seen Chaka Chandler, the junior from Columbus, who would normally have got some time by now. He's got a knee injury. Wearing a brace, tried it to practice yesterday and warm up tonight. Case Beer won't drop for him. Hoopman follows. That's all you want him to do, Hoopman. That's as good as an assist from Case Beer. Get points. it up there, get on the boards. Van Dyke doesn't find the block out. Hoopman's open for an offensive rebound. Ralph Davis has replaced Johnny Melvin at the forward spot for UTEP, has been in there since midway through the first half. Case Beer back the other way for Evansville. Off to Jackson. Heisel for three. He's got it. That's his game also. You may get a timeout now by Texas El Paso. Right now they've got a problem. Momentum's gone back to Evansville. Eight points for Heisel, the sophomore from Terre Haute. 39, 33, six point margin now. Largest of the game for Evansville. Davis can't get it. Van Dyke scrapping for it. And there's going to be a foul call against David Van Dyke. We pushed off before he got the ball. Well, I think during that timeout, UTEP's got to put more pressure on the ball, be more aggressive defensively. They've lost that intensity they had earlier in the game. This is Case Beer. Melvin back in at forward number 32. The rebound is Maxi. UTEP has attempted only one three 
pointer and missed it. Evansville's 5 of 12 in that category. Arizona closing to within 6 in that game. We'll keep track of it for you. Stewart and Rivera in the backcourt. This is Melvin driving. Been out of the game since about halfway through the first half. Van Dyke missed. And the foul will go against Reed Jackson. See, that's where the strength of Van Dyke, he doesn't really finish his shot, so he goes up. If he would get better post position, go in stronger, or when he was back out about another two steps, he was banking a lot better than he was right now. Maxi, of course, really strong on the boards, kept it alive. Six point Evansville lead. You tip ball. That's Van Dyke outside, off to Rivera. Rivera in the paint. Ball batted around. Melvin can't keep it alive, and it will be Evansville ball. Hoopman, well, uh, Bice, Casebeer, Jackson, and Kokenauer, the lineup. Well, Kokenauer got lucky because Melvin got by and got a piece of that ball and almost got that offensive rebound because he did not block out Kokenauer. Evansville has gone with only six men to this point in the game. Casebeer's hook shot won't go. Travel call. Don Haskins has used eight players from his lineup. I still can't believe Case Bear guarded Maxi. Maxi forced outside and hands it off. Melvin back inside to Maxi, trying to get it over Hoopman, can't do it, and the rebound nicely taken by Jackson. Here's Case Beer. He's got it. Good play. Went to the hole. Very strong on that play going inside Case Beer. 12 points for Case Beer. 41 to 33 now. Evansville the eighth seed. UTEP the nine. Earlier, Kansas, Michigan State. Cincinnati advanced out of Dayton. Not out of it, they'll be back here Sunday afternoon out of the first round. Pretty good possession for Evansville and the steal underneath. When they come down the lane, pass ahead to Case Bear. He reads Heisel, but looks at the lane, he goes in strong. In between two players, lays it up strong himself. Case Bear for a big basket. Hopeman picked up the foul, his second. Melvin at the line. Of course, El Paso doesn't like to press or trap full court. They're going to stay with their man-to-man, -man, try to dig it out. But I think Stewart and Edwards, are, uh, when you look at Rivera and you look at Stewart, they've got to do, I think, more pressuring on the ball. When they go after the defensive situations, uh, I don't think the quickness of Evansville was there. And I think if the guards of Stewart and Rivera can do the pressure on them, they could turn it over. Well, in good recovery after missing his free throws, And Maxi picks up his second foul. Evansville on a 14 to 2 spurt right now. And of course, I think when the halftime adjustment came through, uh, you got to credit Jimmy Cruz for getting that team back in this game. They shot 33% in the first half. And of course, their percentage is up this half. 7.32 to go. East Tennessee State up by six over Arizona in that game. Kokenauer. Back iron. Maxi rebounding. Purple Aces by Aid. And let's uh, right now wheel you around the country. Some big stories happening, especially with Arizona, the three seed in the Southeast. Six minutes and change to go, Billy. Arizona's actually on a 12 2 run to come back from 16 down. Jim, it stayed at 66 60 for the longest of times. Uh, East Tennessee State having a lot of opportunities to score, just couldn't do much. The fact that I think they may be tiring out a little bit. You know, Lou Olson has that deep bench and starting to work on him some. Timeout on the court at the Omni. And the Buccaneers could pull off the biggest surprise of this first round. What an upset Friday this has been so far. And that would only add to it. Now, another game 
in progress. Robert Morris and UCLA and the Bruins, the one seed out west, just can't shake the 16 seed. They can at all, with the exception of one man. They'd be in serious trouble. Tracy Murray has 20 of the 43 points. He's made them from every angle tonight. One of the great shooters in the country, shooting over 50% from the three point range. Can step out there at 6'8 uh, or 6'9, Jim, and shoot with the best of them. The Colonials with the best showing of this tournament by a 16 seed. And meanwhile, back to your UTEP and Evansville game. How about the Aces, Billy, pulling away a little bit here? Right. They had that great 12-4 uh, to 4 run that got this uh, margin opened up for them. But it's back down to six. Just hard-nosed defense by UTEP. Didn't make the tournament last year for the first time in uh, seven years. But remember the year before that great game they had with Minnesota. So it's a team known for their hard-nosed defense. Certainly not giving up on the Miners, though, with 11 minutes to go. And we go back out there to Tim Ryan and Digger Phelps. Thank you, Jim. 11.04 to go. The Aces on top, 41 to 35, as Billy said, a six-point margin. Stewart off to Rivera. They've got the three guards in now with Bice, and Rivera misses. Eisel rebounding. Casebeer, a little room on the baseline. Van Dyke cuts him off. Out to Hoopman. Jackson. Hoopman. He's been a difference this half. As you take a look at Hoopman on the boards, as well as defense, offensive rebounding, he's kept Evansville in this game, and this is why they're doing the spurt that you see going on right now. 13 points over his season average of 12-1 a game. Doing a fine job. Rivera trying to drive. Kokenauer denies him. They're looking to get the three-guard offense to go to the penetration to go inside. This is Bice, Jim Bice. Good defense by Evansville. Here's the guy that wants the ball. Rivera's the guy that wants to take this game over. He knows he's got to get some points right now. Stewart won't go for him. Rebound try by Davis. Haysbeer dribbles away. Two on one. Nice play. Haysbeer and it's blocked from behind. Foul called. Van Dyke. Third on him. Look at the replay here. We go down. Great turn. Back to him. Case Beer goes up strong. Two shot foul. Evansville, this defensive intensity by UTEP has not really affected Evansville. They played with a lot more confidence after shooting 33% in the first half. Jimmy Cruz got them inside, settled them down. They're only down two points because of the foul shooting when they went eight out of 12 in the first half. So now they're shooting better, running better, hitting the boards better, and this is where Evansville right now has control of this game. 9.50 to play. Maxi comes in, Van Dyke goes out. They're going with a smaller team because they want to really go to the spread game, look to penetrate, and Maxi's the guy that can really get things going for him inside as far as offensive rebounding, but they haven't gone to him enough this half. Look for Rivera to look for him inside. Maxi inside. Case Beer hits with the free throw 44 to 35. We talked about Hoopman doing so well. He's six of nine from the field. Maxi outside for Davis. Return feet for Maxi and he's fouled by Taylor. He's so strong inside. He moves well without the Jackson ball. You saw him go from the top of the circle, down low, got the power play inside, went up strong, drew the foul. That's his third. Third on Reed Jackson. Both of these teams, what happens when they play straight man to man and as passive as the guards are playing it for UTEP, it doesn't put you in a situation to go catch up. So when you get under the 10 minute mark, you've got to say when you're down nine or eight, when do I extend the defense? When do the guards put more pressure on Evansville guards? And we've yet to see that as far as a comeback for UTEP. Maxi from the free throw line, a good free throw shooter. He's a 71 percenter. Don Haskins, of course, one of the great coaches, over 600 wins, a disciple of man-to-man -man defense. But I think as this game winds down, look for them to do some things defensively to try to get back by forcing turnovers into Evansville's backcourt. Won the NCAA championship in 1966. Brings a 25 and 6 team in here to this tournament. And trailing by seven right now, 9:30 to go. Jackson. Too quick. 
And that's what we're talking about. Now to step up that defensive intensity. Another turnover. Big play here. Big possession right now for UTEP. Let's see what Rivera decides to do. Nine turnovers for Evansville. Seven committed by the UTEP Niners. Johnny Melvin for Bice. Won't drop for him. Good rebound by Melvin. It's one thing here on these rims. Long shot, long rebound. That rebound came out near the foul line. Melvin got it. These rims are a little hard if they. Rivera inside for Maxi. That's where Rivera's at his best. He knows Maxi's strong inside. He knows Evansville cannot match up to him. They've got to look for him more. 15 points for Marlon Maxi. 44 to 39. Purple Aces lead. Failed by two at the half. Case Beer. Jackson on the follow, and he's fouled. Well, at least Case Beer made the move to the basket. He gave a good ball fake, went up strong, and that allowed Jackson to get a piece of the offensive rebound where he got fouled. So they're shooting two now. Case Beer moving without the ball, came off the screen very, very well, moving a lot better. There's your ball fake, goes up, gets bumped, could have been a foul the other way. But Jackson followed it, got the offensive rebound. Goes to the line for two. Vice picks up his third foul. Now the Aces only have three team fouls, so they're far away from giving the Miners the ball on the foul line. And the Miners have got six team fouls, so foul shooting right now is not going to be the factor that you look for going down for Evansville to ice this game. They've got to play yet. Too much time. Jackson makes it 46 to 39. Rivera Stewart. Melvin and Dyke back in and he banks one. So he's better off outside. He gets he doesn't finish as well inside as he does outside. He's more out, out confident shooting in that jump shot. Plus it allows Maxi to get ready for an offensive rebound. Well points for Van Dyke. Jackson driving right into good rotation. Very good rotation. See Haskins has this team playing the solid team aggressive defense. They know how to rotate. Rivera. Stewart, number 13. Rivera, number 11. And Rivera lets fly. Won't drop for him. Maxi keeps it alive to Melvin. Good play by UTEP. So that ball came off hard in that rim. It was loose, and UTEP ends up with it. Your guards have got a rebound in this gym. And Dyke, no luck. Maxi tipping it around. Hoopman finally gets into it. Maxi again. He's strong. He kept it alive. He's got that look in his eye. He knows he wants this. He knows he can rebound inside. Great offensive rebound led to three point play. Comes up strong. Keeps it alive. This is his power. Look him go in. He just leans in and goes up and hits it. I think Evansville's guards got to get into the paint and rebound. A lot of these balls will come off in between the dotted line, which is not here the circle line and the foul line because of the hardness of the rims. Your guards have got a rebound in Dayton's gym. 18 points now for Maxi, a three point play. Two point margin for Evansville. 707 and counting down. Heisel, Kokenauer, Elkins, Casebeer, and Hoopman the lineup for the Purple Aces. Reed Jackson with four fouls on the bench. They've used only six players. That's all they've got. Chuck and Chandler hurt, unable to go. Case Bear stopped by Van Dyke. Well, Van Dyke came over to help. Case Bear should have looked for the open man underneath and dish it off. Chance to tie for the Miners. Sell out crowd at the University of Dayton Arena watching this final game of the first round in this Midwest region. Maxi going and Hoopman fouls him. See, Haskins during the timeout, as smart as he is in as many games as he's coached, he knows where his power is right now. And you got to credit Stuart Rivera for looking inside to get Maxi the ball because right now, 
Evansville is not the team that can defend him. They're not doubling down on the ball. They're not putting pressure on the passing lanes inside. So Maxie has the capabilities of getting getting open. Now on the other end of the floor, when Case Bear gets double teamed, he's smart enough to know he should be looking to the weak side, especially when Van Dyke comes over to help to block the shot. That means Van Dyke's man's open underneath, which should be Hoopman. Hoopman's third foul. Case Bear got instructions from Coach Jim Cruz. Maxie misses. The first of two. Watch for Heisel and Case Beer now to take over this game for Evansville. They've got to get a basket this time down. So Maxie can't tie it up, but he can bring him to within one, and he does. Get into the odd even, it gets to be pressure, especially for the three point shot at the end of the game. Kokenauer, Evansville's fans come to their feet. They know that this is an important time of the game for their team. Kokenauer, the Elkins. Heisel. Elkins looking to Case Beer. Well, he's got the small man on him, Stewart. If they just post up and get everybody away, you can get the ball to Case Beer inside. Case Beer for Hoopman, not a good pass. Van Dyke saw it coming. Chance for the lead for the Miners. Melvin for Rivera. Rivera perfectly shot in the paint. Rivera can do this. He knows he can take anybody one on one. Smart player, knows where the floor action is, and read that very, very well. 10 points for Rivera. See, Maxie can cheat off Elkins right now because he's not looking to score. Elkins for Hoopman and Stewart, I believe. Yes, giving a push, and that's his fourth. And East Tennessee State, the 14th seed, leading 79 to 72 over number three Arizona. A lot of folks thought Arizona was a Final Four team. Well, they had that weekend where they just didn't put it together in Los Angeles, and it looks like they haven't recovered from that weekend when they lost that Southern Cal, lost that UCLA, their last two games of the year, and now they come into that game where you play in the first round against an unknown, and East Tennessee just took it to them tonight. Open at the line. Stewart, four fouls for UTEP. 13 points for Hoopman, misses a chance to tie. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation, so it was a good foul when you go inside, and Stewart did the right thing to follow. Now they got possession, plus the lead. This is as close as most of the observers figured it would be. Number eight against number nine, two teams that matched up, figuring this kind of a tight battle right to the wire. Melvin Van Dyke. They'll use the clock and be smart, either with Stewart or Rivera going one on one. Stewart, Stewart lets it fly. Not a good shot over Heisel. Didn't penetrate. He had him one on one, didn't make anything happen. Purple Aces with a chance for the lead. Big basket. He has played so well. 15 points. That's a big time play inside. When you look inside, get it to your big man. He just turns and shoots over. Nice bank shot. Van Dyke outside. Rivera. Melvin. Casebeer fell, and Maxi finds an easy lane with Casebeer on the floor. Good screen inside. He got hung up on that screen. Casebeer got lost his footing, and, and that's where Maxi was open. Key possession right now for Evansville. Nice pass. Open hour, good pass. Yes, sir. Jackson, but it's Hoopman. He's just got a nose for the ball, Tim. He knows how to follow the offensive rebound, reads it well. No one's blocking him out. Van Dyke's looking to go block or get to the ball, and Hoopman's open every time down. 17 points for the big man. Now 
Irvin. Unimpeded. Puts him in front, 51 to 50. Good one on one move. Coming around the baseline, went up and under. First point of the game for Melvin. Got an early foul trouble, sat out the better part of the first half and well into the second. Van Dyke, a good play to break up the pass. Van Dyke goes the distance. No, no walk. basket. No, it was the walk. Timeouts remaining, each having two. Or right, Evansville right now with this timeout will run a set play. They need a score. Reed Jackson. Back for Kokenauer. Heisel for Case Beer. Case Beer nearly lost it to Melvin and nearly does again. Kokenauer off the back rim. Good feed for Heisel, won't go for him. Rebounded by Van Dyke for UTEP. Well, you want to live with that shot, you go for it, but when you don't get that offensive rebound, now you're down one, UTEP has the ball. They've got the quickness and the guards, and they're also ready to go into the bonus. To shoot the one and one. 134 to go. This is the man right here, Rivera, that's going to make a decision. Eddie Rivera. Melvin, 11 seconds on the shot clock. Rivera, blocked from behind, gets it out to Van Dyke. Copeland battling, and down they come together. And it's a rule of jump ball. A possession arrow is UTEP's. Boy, big play, though, by Upman getting inside. When Hoopman goes in there and gets that rebound on a jump ball situation, it could have been a score on a missed shot. So credit again. Hoopman's been the guy that's kept Evansville in this game the second half with consistency. No one else has really turned on today for Evansville. 17 points, 10 rebounds for Jimmy Hoopman. Jimmy Cruz wants a timeout. He doesn't like what he sees out there. He wants to talk to him, settle things down. Doesn't want to see a set play. Now, Haskins knows he's got the ball with 109, a one-point lead. He can milk the clock for 45 seconds. Look for UTEP right now to be smart with this ball. They don't have to score. The clock's in their favor. They got three great guards out here that can handle it. This kid right here now, Rivera's the guy who can take this game over. They know the next time they get fouled, they're in the bonus for a one and one. Jim Bice, Eddie Rivera, Trent Stewart. Three guards out there with Maxie and Van Dyke. Bice strong with the ball. Rivera's the guy you want with it. Hokenauer chasing Rivera all over the place, trying to deny that pass. Maxi comes out to help Bice. 10 seconds on the shot clock, 32 seconds in the game. Rivera, five seconds. He hits. It's the guy they want. Evansville got to come down quick, get a score, and get a timeout. There's still plenty of time for Evansville to set something. 16 seconds. Case Beer calling for help. Gets the screen. Eight seconds left. Eisel inside for Hoopman. Won't go for him. Foul against UTEP. Casebeer and Kokenauer there underneath. And he makes it calmly. Marlon Maxey's had a strong game. Boy, this is a big win for UTEP. You know, they kept their composure, kept their poise, got back in it. Evansville played really well to sprint the second half where they were down at halftime but came back, made things happen. Now, when you take a look at the next game here, Kansas against UTEP. 23 points for Maxi and the Miners of Texas El Paso have outlasted the Purple Aces from Evansville and advanced to meet the top seed in the Midwest, the Jayhawks of Kansas. A close, hard-fought battle all the way, a two-point margin at the half. We kept on the lead, and they win by five at the end. <laughs>